Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the SL Shaker Lane School Building Committee meeting for uh, October 16th. Um, my name is Steve Moore, Chairman of the building uh, the uh, Shaker Lane School Building Committee, and also one of three representatives from uh, PMBC. Steve. Uh, Steve Moody, Finance Committee representative. Steve. Steve Mischer, Studio G Architects. Mary Lee Mercy, Studio G Architect. Daryl Missler, Studio G. Uh, Mark Stafford, uh, Turner Council Community Regional Project Manager. Hi, Matt Stafford, I'm with Turner Council here. Ryan Ferrara, Assistant Town Administrator and Finance Director. Kelly Clenchy, Superintendent of Schools. I'm Michelle King, Principal of Shake Lane. Chuck the Coast, Select Board Member, Representative from SPLC. And Bob. Bob Romney, member of the PMBC. All right. Um, before we get started, um, I have to leave at 8 o'clock. I'm going to turn the meeting over to Kelly at 8 o'clock. Um, what we want to do to be um, fair to the whole, well, the limited audience here, um, is as we go through the presentation, uh, we want to invite questions and we will entertain an answer, but we will not get into a dialogue. If there are any people that don't feel that they got the right answer or the answer they were looking for from uh, that interchange, we will uh, entertain it at the end of the meeting. Um, we'll move over to the um, approving the uh, meeting minutes from the last meeting. Do we uh, have those? Um, we have any. Do we have any ones? I haven't seen. Them. Yeah, we haven't seen any. So we'll, we'll table that. Table that. Okay. Okay. Uh, move over to uh, approve the invoices. Brian, do you want to take that? Sure. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve the invoices for TTH basic services. If we could just do these. One vote at a time. Any amount of fourteen thousand two hundred fifteen dollars. Thank you. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, so uh, invoice uh, Studio G for basic services in, in the amount of forty five thousand dollars. All in favor? Oh, sorry. motion. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion. Do you need to do a Roll call with Bob. Um, Bob, did you uh, vote? <laughs> I got it, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, go ahead, Brian. Okay. Uh, and uh, the, uh, make a motion to approve the Studio G reimbursable services for site survey in the amount of $2,090. And just to be clear, this uh, additional site survey was due to the fact that the uh, uh, DPW didn't have the. Uh, that's my understanding. To, to dig deep enough. Uh, right. So this was an alternate. No, that's not. It's not this, this, is, this is just the services for the site survey. They didn't okay. build 100% the first time. Okay. Now they're done. We do have that coming up as part of an adult okay. development probably the next week. Thank Sorry. you. Thank right. you for the clarification. Okay. Uh, yep. Yeah, so we made the motion already. Um, so the second. Okay. Second. All Thank in favor? You. Aye. 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 Aye system that's at the school currently uh, in the amount of $2,000. So you will vote. Uh, we vetted it, we approved it, we were looking for your approval. Make a motion that we approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, motion carries. And um, the second proposal that we've vetted and approved is for um, peer consulting for geo environmental test pit observations. Um, in the base amount of 6,884 6, and alternates if realized for $9,224. So we're asking for approval of the $9,224. Is 
get that as invoice and approve and realize we will do that. If not, it will be below our mind. Make a motion that we approve that for nine thousand two hundred and twenty-four dollars. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, Mr. Chairman, point of order. I'd just like to take one item out of the out of order in the agenda and jump up jump up to item um, five. Um, for us to just quickly go over where we stand on the budget and the uh, schedule. So approved. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Well, this is the current schedule for the feasibility study. Um, where we are currently in the field towards the bottom with the yellow thing is a yellow. Yeah. Plus, just the total. Right, well, we have a total budget for one million eighty five thousand dollars to date um, between TGH's invoices, Studio G's invoices, uh, basic services, and additional services. Uh, we are currently billed at three hundred seventy eight thousand, and we have seven hundred six thousand dollars remaining. Um, so far, the um, broken out amounts for environmental insight. Uh, other expenses for the owner and the fees uh we are within budget uh currently and we do we may have a couple of other um environments and side issues that we'll need to address before we get through feasibility which is the end of schematic right which is about a year from now so um but currently we're this is where we are on the, on the budget and everything seems to be uh pretty comfortable right now okay thank you bring up the schedule So as we all know, we submitted the PDP at the end of the summer. Um, the MSBA is still reviewing uh, the information for the MS for the PDP, which they'll, if they have any uh, information that we have to address or change, we can respond to them in a, a expedited manner, or we can always answer it in the PSR. Um, we'd like to get it done in the PDP, but sometimes you can get that question answered as you go forward. So we're currently in right now the preferred schematic report which is the three options that were identified in the PDP are now getting more developed, more detailed, and we'll see that as we as we continue. So currently, we, we are shooting for December 6th for submission of the PSR. Um, we were informed by the MSBA that we actually have to the 19th of December, so there's a little bit of play in there if we run a little late on times because... With their recommend, with their requirements, you have to be so many days ahead of their next meeting, and we were a little bit before that. So I think we have some good good play there. Um, from what we've seen, everything seems to be on track right now. We are expecting our cost estimates to come in early next week, um, and we will reconcile them with the um, with the designer and have information for next Wednesday's meeting. That's going to be um, informative to where we are for cost estimating. Um, so everything is, is is on schedule right now. If you can go up a little bit more to the bottom, uh, because when we go through schematic design, so we're shooting for the approval of the PSR at the MSBA's board meeting on February 2025. That's as we get through a year going through schematic design and we go through the um, uh, town town meeting approval, and we. This is condensed, and as you see, the modules are closed up, but they'll be opened up later on as we go through each phase. Um, just to give you a sense of when, so the highlighted date we're shooting for is the 26th of um, February, um, 2025. That's when you get the approval to go to the next phase, the detailed design, um, construction documents, fun, um, excuse me, so schematic design, funding the project, getting into detailed design, going into construction, et cetera, et cetera. So right now, the other uh, highlighted item, the estimated movement date right now we're looking at is February 19th of 2029. That actually coincides with the school vacation week. So we thought if that's going to work, that might be a good week to move when there's vacation. Um, this is a, a, always a moving target. Things can change in the schedule, but that's where we're estimating right now uh, for that time frame. Any, any questions on schedule? <laughs> I wanted to say there's a lot of uh, decisions to be made, what type of construction process we're going to do, procure. So a lot of this isn't in stone. It, you know, there's plenty of decisions to make and, 
and time to that this could be adjusted. Correct. Both yeah. directions. Yeah. So well, the focus right now is on the PSR, which is another very big document like the PDP was, but it's so much further development yeah. developed than the PDP was. So you'll see as we as we move on, we say wait to the next uh, to the next section. And similarly right. to the PDP that everyone the SPC approved before it goes to the MSBA, again we'll have another chance to approve the PSR before that goes to the MSBA. So Right. We're not doing all none of all groups. Yeah. Everybody that gets to see it. Right. So, you know, we're not working above all this is your community, and we want to make sure that we're fulfilling the desires of a little to make sure that this project works for you. So here we are. This is the design. Thanks. Appreciate that. Thanks. Um, so the design agenda um, for today is essentially a design update. So we've been in lots of communication, um, taking the visioning that we started with previously, moving it forward into the design, how can we implement these amazing strategies and this educational plan into the building? So we've been working with Michelle and Kelly on that, as well as I see some folks in the room who also have um, had their, their input um, as part of this. So it's really great that this is what we love doing as architects, is taking these visions and just making those spaces intangible. So, uh, that's the design update Mary Lee will get to. We're going to do a quick sustainability overview. We just wanted to dabble on it super quickly. We'll have another opportunity to talk about sustainability because it is so important for the work and just making sure that we're being conscientious to um, sustainable measures and what, we, what the goals are for the community. Uh, community outreach is also important because we want to make sure that this project is socialized. The last thing we want to hear is, I didn't know that this was happening. So we want to make sure that we're continuing the community involvement and input, and there's opportunities for that. And the last thing we want to talk about is the lens of the special town meeting on the 29th of October. So getting from you what you feel like your community wants wants to hear in our, in our 10 minutes. So um, we're first on the agenda, which is great, and hoping that we can certainly communicate you know, if we can pack the last nine months that we've been working with you all in your community into 10 minutes, what is it that wants to be heard and what type of information that we should convey? So that's the that's our roadmap for this meeting. <laughs> so project goals. So always we always keep these goals in mind. Whenever there's a, a roadblock or whenever there's an obstacle, we want to make sure we're coming back to the heart of what the project is really about. So I'm not going to read this. Everyone has it. It will be available on the website. Um, high level, yeah, healthy, safe, and secure. Maximize value, making sure it's sustainable. Maximizing inclusion, making sure that there's learning everywhere. So these are messages that we've been hearing. The project schedule. So here we are, marked a, a, a big broad overview. This is a pretty picture to see. Today we're talking about the project status. What you're going to see today went to the cost estimators last week. So they are doing their wonders coming up with the project estimate. The design team, Studio G, has a cost estimator, and Turner Thompson here also has an estimator. So we're going to have two. So it's good that it's not before we had just one. So now we can certainly make sure that they're aligned, reconcile, and, and see where we're landing with the budget. We're not going to talk about cost today, since that's in progress. That's when we talk, 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 talk. Next. Next. When we're, when we're back together oh, next week, um, we'll have more information about that. So I know cost is on everyone's mind. It's on ours as well. Making sure we're being cost conscious. It just, we don't have the information today. So just wanted to make sure that um, the focus today is on design. Next week, we're all ears for cost. And of course, a special town meeting. So we're two thirds of the way through module three, which is feasibility. And then um, module four, schematic design, as Mark mentioned, we'll jump into actually in January. So we do a bit more of, um, of overlap. Yeah. All right. So to catch everybody up to where we are now. Last time we met with the broader group, the number that we mentioned was 103,876 square feet. Since then, we have made big efforts to reduce the size of that square footage. Uh, we've gotten it down to, for a new construction option, 97,307 uh, square feet. So just to compare, these numbers are sometimes sort of 
difficult to assign meaning to and really understand them. We have the existing Shaker Lane School all, all the way over there on the left. That is just over, it's almost 61,000 square feet. This is a little bit difficult to compare to the other numbers because in the current school, they are using a lot of spaces that wouldn't traditionally be used as spaces, such as they're doing uh, like reading support meetings in corridors, or they have people who have offices in closets. So the square footage, the, the net square footage there, the 41,000, is a little bit overinflated what it really should be. And they're really making do uh, with what they have. The MSBA guidelines for a school of this size with this enrollment is 73.845, but that does not include a pre-K, and that does not include the special ed spaces that are particular to each district. So if you factor those in, the number is around 86,000. So 73,000 number is a number that people may have heard before because that was what the MSBA talks about in the beginning, that's their guidelines, but a more realistic number to compare the two is the 86,000 because that does include the three pre-K classrooms uh, plus a special ed pre-K plus the other specialized Shake Lane School special ed spaces. So with that said, we're looking at three options now. Over the course of the rest of PSR, we will be narrowing this down to one to pursue into schematic design. The ad reno is a little bit smaller, 94 and change compared to 97 and change. The reason for that is that the addition, which is an academic wing, and the gymnasium are sized properly, but the existing portion of the school that's remaining, that's being renovated into uh, new spaces to adapt to the program, some of those spaces are a little bit undersized. We're limited by the existing structure, some of the existing walls, and so those spaces in the remaining school, some of them are undersized compared to the MSBA guidelines. Not a huge amount. Uh, the 94 to 97 comparison is not a huge amount, but that is a factor that goes into the decision uh, when deciding amongst these three. The last thing I want to point out on there is the scores <coughs> from July 17th. If people remember or they were present at that meeting, the there was a design and site selection subcommittee made up of SBC members, and they looked at a whole bunch of different criteria to evaluate six sites that we were looking at at once. And in order to sort of apply a scientific process to this very subjective all these subjective ideas about what the new school should be like, we had a system of assigning number values to all these different qualities that the project that the different sites needed to have. So those scores up there represent the top three choices that were selected to move from PDP into PSR. And we will be going through that process again later on once we have cost information to help narrow this down to one choice. I think I Missed Kelly. Something anybody wants to add? Uh, no, thank you for that. One thing I want to reemphasize is the uh, addition renovation. I mean, even at ninety four thousand eight hundred and fifty square feet, the remaining structure uh, contains uh, various rooms that do not meet MSB recommendations. So for me, you know, even if, uh, when I'm when we look at a school that, that's designed for students, and I want to emphasize that point because schools many years ago, what by many years I'm talking previous 10 or 15 years, were, were designed for staff and rooms. And, and education's changed a lot since, since even then, but even more when you look at the first uh, edition of Shaker Lane School. And it's more it's more student-centered. We, we have greater specialization. Uh, Back in the 60s and 70s and 80s, uh, for a pre-K to two school, a teacher was teaching all subjects, all eight subjects. Now we have specialty teachers that teach art, the Z, music, computer technology, computer innovation, maker spaces, et cetera. And our demographics have, have changed significantly over those years. And, and we have a lot of clinical staff that, that service a number of students as our student demographics change. The, Philosophy of our district, which coincides with, with many districts, is we really believe that it's better to educate our children within a community rather than sending them to outside school placements. 
There was a time in Littleton during my time here, this is almost 14 years for me, superintendent here, where we were sending young children out to alternate placements, sometimes an hour, two hours away. But as our demographics have changed, we, we have been able to have that critical mass of students so we could offer those programs in-house in our schools and, and offer quality programs. And, and for me, that, that's very important. If we're going to keep students in our district, we have to offer programs that are as good as the programs we're sending them to. My preference is better than the programs that we're sending them to. So this is an opportunity for us to, to really look at how we reimagine Shaker Lane School for the next 50 years. It's easy to, to look at where we are now but it's important to, to remember that you usually don't get a, a school renovation or a new building until at least 50 years after that building is built. And imagine how things have changed since you've been in school. And then let's project from now another 50 years out. I think you'll begin to appreciate how learning has changed during that time. Technology has changed. Uh, we use a, a concept called universal design for learning. And we're, we're focusing on engaging students in the learning process in groups, student voice as well. And we require more space to, to offer those kinds of activities. So what we're looking for is a, is a school that is truly built for students. So when you walk into that school, you don't have to guess whether it's a six to eight school or a three to five school. You'll know that it's a pre-K to two school. Does anybody have any additional comments? This slide goes into a little bit more detail about the space reductions that we've made and the difference between what the Shaper Lane educational plan requires versus the MSPA guidelines. And then over on the left is a graphic representation of the space that Shaker Lane is dealing with now compared to MSBA guideline size. So you'll notice in many of these categories, it's a really striking difference. Like for example, the health and physical education, that's the gymnasium and office and storage, but mostly gymnasium. They are working in a teeny tiny space and the gym teacher is great and he's able to do so much, but it is a severely undersized gymnasium. I uh, think same thing for media center or library, it's dramatically undersized. And this is just the, the theme that continues to pop up when you compare the existing Shaker Lane building with MSBA guidelines, and then even compare it further with the Shaker Lane, Shaker Lane educational program, educational plan, which is what the people at Shaker Lane want to accomplish for the students. Any comments on this slide? Is there a question on this great graph? So the, the graph on the left shows the compares the existing versus the guidelines, but the proposal is a lot more square foot than the MSBA guidelines. It would be great to see that chart on the left having a third bar that showed what, what's being proposed. Okay, yeah, that's that's a, a good idea, and we can add it for next week's presentation. Marilyn, do you want me to answer that just for a piece about the, the shared learning space? So one of the pieces that we have um, to speak to that is we are really thinking about current learning for students and shared experiences. So we are creating what we're calling as a learning den. So imagine a first grade uh, set of six classrooms, seven classrooms. We want those students to spill out into what we call a learning den so they can share experiences across all of grade level. So that is a little piece of the extra space that we're creating because we're trying to think of creativity, creativity, collaboration, skills that these kids are going to need from the age of five up until, you know, 50, 60. So we're trying to build that space at Shaker Lane. So that is a little bit more of the additional space. So I just want to speak to that. So we're thinking of this pod with this larger spill out space just to give a little bit of um of week to that. Yeah, and we have some plans to share so that you'll actually see what that looks like. Uh, anything else? Anybody else? All right. So I'm going to go through each of those three options, pointing out a few key pieces of information. Uh, 
for each option, there's an overall site plan like this, where you can really see the plan for the landscape design, the site circulation, as well as where the wetland boundaries fall. And then the next slide will have more detailed information about the plan itself. So this is the Ad Reno option. This shows the two additions, one of them being the academic wing, which is primarily classrooms, but it's also a lot of special ed spaces. It is some specialty spaces like the occupational therapy, physical therapy room, things like that, but we're referring it to it as the academic wing. And then a full-sized gymnasium plus storage in that other addition. And then the renovated Shaker Lane is remaining and it shows where the existing will be demolished. And then zooming in on this option, there's a lot of information on this slide, but I wanna hit the key points. First, there is a red squiggly line, and that is here. It kind of goes to school use only versus community use. And this shows the division between spaces that would be available after hours and on the weekends for the community to use. That includes spaces like the media center and the gymnasium and the cafeteria. And then the rest of the, of the school is for school use only. That will be controlled access by uh, uh, security doors and uh, a series of doors that people would not have access to. And you can really control where those community members are when they use it after school. So it's a way to share this resource with the entire community, yet still keep the, the privacy and the main focus of the school for the students. One thing that we are, that we, that we do is show the plan for future expansion. So there is a dashed line here off the end of the school. And in this option, this represents a two-story addition of four classrooms. And there is space there to make that addition. And this could be, this is best practice really to plan for what do you do when your student population grows. It's also a requirement for the MSBA for us to show where this expansion would happen. We also have indicated on here where outdoor classrooms are, which is more of a more formal setup, paved area, a place where a teacher can bring their students out. Maybe there's some seating. This is not the same thing as outdoor learning, which can really take place anywhere. This is just the more formal setup immediately outside of the classroom ring. This also shows where the primary play and pre-K play spaces are. And in all options, those are separated. Keep the little ones away from the slightly larger ones. <clears throat> and then on this one, there is a summary of the square footages. If anybody is curious about how much of the existing school is remaining, how much is being demolished, and the size of the additions. I'll give you a second to absorb this. And if anybody has any questions, feel free. What the second floor is just classroom. Second floor, all right, so first floor is, right here is preschool, and that is located closest to the main entrance, so those little kids have the shortest distance to walk. This is also shared with some physical therapy and other special ed spaces here. And then also on the first floor, we have kindergarten, so the littlest ones are downstairs. And then upstairs, we have first and second grade. There are two staircases, one at each end, and that's both for egress, but it's also so you can really get interaction between the grade levels. So if you ever have second graders with kindergarten buddies, they're just a quick flight down the stairs. And so it's really going to help uh, help with that collaboration among multi-grade levels. So I can see one question being asked is, why did you choose to demo some and we and de and have others? Is there a simple answer to that? Yes. So in this ad reno option, we did a study of the structure and the mechanical systems. And the of, of this building, the academic wing was really limited floor to floor. So the school has tried many times in the past to add air conditioning to that wing, and there's just not the clearance floor to floor to add it. And so each room has its own individual system to get air conditioning in there. So it would be really, really tough to renovate the existing academic wing to get all the systems updated because it also would be uh, fire protection and other things that take up a lot of space above the ceiling. 
So and that also happens to be the oldest portion of the building. So it seems like a reasonable conclusion to demolish the existing academic wing and build a new one. It also helps with phasing because the kids can stay in the academic wing while the new one is being built and then shipped over there. And then while the renovations take place, those people can be moved into the vacant academic wing and it really helps with phasing so we don't need any modulars. Yes, and then demo that at the end and add a bus loop. Anything else? All right. Next option is new construction on the upper field. You can see the dashed line here that is the existing Shaker Lane School. And this would be able to be built with minimal disruptions to the existing school. And once it's fully built, everybody moves over and it's demolished. So really a one phase type situation here. This option preserves the field on the lower field, this space in the field here. And then this area opens up down here for community use. It could be youth soccer. It could just be left as open rec space. It could be little league or something like that. There's all kinds of different ways that this could be finished down here, but it ends up becoming a resource for the community. This one also includes revised site circulation. So now there is a new, no, there we go. There is a new access point here on Shaker Lane. And this gives us the ability to pull all of the queuing onto the site and clear up neighborhood congestion. Each of these options has separate car and bus loops, which is important for the Safe Routes to School program, which I know Michelle has been working really hard to implement that as, as well as possible with the existing school. And these new options all plan for that, as well as plenty of parking. And getting a little bit So zooming in to the building, again, we have this squiggly red line with the division between what is school use only as opposed to potential community use after hours. Again, it includes the cafeteria, the gymnasium, and the media center over here with the rest of the school able to be closed off completely. One thing that I would like to point out is that this part of the school, if you look at it on the entire site, is this part of the school here, which means that everything from here down on the site becomes a community resource. And it really is a great way to organize the site in terms of usage, uh, keeping certain areas reserved for student use only, including play areas and outdoor recreation space as well as really giving back to the community and making this a great resource for everyone. This building is organized so that you come in here at the orange triangle, right here is reception. Kindergarten is over here with again, the shortest route to get to their classes. And then kindergarten is up here, also on the first floor. The gymnasium has easy access to get outside for some nice running around space there. Fenced end so that anybody decides to be a runner, they're not going far. And again, you can see the dash line where we have the proposed future classroom expansion. In this case, it is a two-story addition, but we've got two classrooms up here on the second floor. This little closet would turn into a corridor to match what's going on downstairs. And then there would be a staircase added at the end of this to provide egress out through that direction. So it's a little more complicated than the other one, but easily planned for if that's the situation. And again, this would be pretty easy to implement with minimal impact to the building occupants. Second floor again has first grade and second grade with stairs leading down to the lower grade levels and direct access to outdoor classrooms, and then a very protected play space here. And I don't wanna to go too much into detail in the interior circulation, but this stair slash ramp right here is intended to be the core of the school, 
with really nice views outside and just a way to build community, a place for all of the, of the students to gather, for it's a, directly connected to the media center. We can incorporate books and reading here. And it's just a really nice way to tie the school together and create a heart of the school. Any comments or questions on this one? Yes. Okay. Um, what's the cost of enrolling the existing building? And granted, it's not the greatest building, but is there any universe where we leave the building for some future use, future to be determined use? So the the initial estimate for demolishing that building is around one point six million dollars, and that would probably be a discussion about whether or not to keep it. There have been studies done of what's going on in the in the school. So if it was kept and used for something else, then you may get into issues of needing to upgrade fire protection, upgrade accessibility, um, what else? Energy efficiency. Yeah, energy efficiency. So sure. I'm just thinking, yes. I mean, the town has recently ADA you know, appliance. Yeah, the town has recently purchased, you know, and renovated some buildings and you know, you know maybe just defer defer and see what comes because it's you know just about but the uh msca pays for part of the demolition of that right they do if the new school is built on the site then the msba helps cover the cost of demolition which if you choose not to demolish then you lose that name potentially but yes and it's just anything else All right. The third option is new construction on the lower field. And we discovered that the wetlands have grown since the town GIS mapping was done. And the where we thought the wetlands buffer was was way back here, closer to the property line. But in actual in actuality, this is where the 100 foot wetland buffer is. So with that said, we're still able to fit a two story building right here on the on the lower field. It does encroach into the upper field. There's a, I believe a softball field right here that would need, we would need that space for the new school, but we do keep the baseball diamond up here further to the north. Uh, again, when and if, the existing school is demolished, then that frees us up for community use. Same story of youth soccer or t-ball or any anything like that that the, that the town and district decide they would like to do with it. While I'm on the slide, I'd like to point out the site organization. This one has the community use here in the middle, and then this site up here to the north, and then eventually this open green space down here with the student spaces to the east and west or the right and left of the core of this option. So the site organization is not as ideal and that will be one of the factors that go into the discussions when we evaluate these three options. Then zooming into the building, we have the main entrance here at the orange arrow. We have the same squiggly red line that encapsulates the gymnasium and the cafeteria. There's also a media center on the second floor, which could also be made available after hours. It just depends on where we put those access doors. There would be an elevator in the space, so it would still be accessible after hours. And that's just a matter of where we put certain doors and access points. On the first floor, we have preschool over here, short walk for them. We have kindergarten also on the first floor. We've got the gymnasium with some running around space, separate play areas for pre-K and the rest of the students. And we have the similar heart of the school here with the stair and ramp located in the center with direct, direct access to the outside. And also it's arranged in such a way that it is restricted to school use only. So this really becomes a resource for the students and the staff. The expansion would be a two-story addition here. 
four classrooms, and those would be arranged in such a way that they can keep using this additional staircase. And if that's built, there is still plenty of room to relocate that outdoor classroom somewhere within this fence area. Any comments or questions on this one? Sure. All right, second floor also is first and second grade. While I have this up, I'll point out one of these dens that Michelle mentioned. So this right here is the first grade, and there are seven classrooms plus a special ed room. There's a resource room or learning center. These rectangles in the middle represent space planning blocks for uh, a satellite media center, a satellite STEM space, and a gathering space that is large enough for all the students in the grade level to sit together and all be watching the same thing. So if you have an outside presenter come in to talk about something like the Northern Lights or an eclipse or anything like that, there's enough room for the entire grade to meet. And then we are also exploring the possibility of adding skylights with a light well that cuts down all the way to the first floor to bring natural light all the way into the middle of the to make these just a really pleasant, open, airy community building space. We're gonna be developing these further and then we are working on some graphics that we'll share at the special town meeting and I'm sure it'll be spread widely, but we're working on a nice graphic for that, really illustrating what this is and how this is the direction that education is going with the connection between these grade level neighborhoods, these community groups, and their connection to the outdoors and how learning can take place in different ways throughout this, this space, which is totally different to what most people grew up with. I, I have a question. Yeah. There's two stairwells on either end. Yeah. Is there one in the middle? There is. There is one right here. Okay. And then there is this stair, which is sort of more of like a, a learning stair type situation. So you can get, so there's a staircase in the middle that you can get to the second floor? Yes. Okay. Yep. No. That's right. Right there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Um, so what, is there a big difference between this and the upper field? Like, what, are there advantages to this and disadvantages? So I think that the difference will become more apparent when we get the cost information in. The upper field is a little bit further away. It's going to require a little bit more complicated uh, utility connections. And I think that will be reflected in the cost, but we can't speak definitively on that now. Um, I do want to say that the floor plan itself is still pretty conceptual at this point, and it's likely going to look pretty different by the time we're done with schematic design. And that's just the nature of how the design works. And so if for instance, if we like this floor plan better than the other one, we can try to take this model and fit it on the upper field site, or we can do other things to tweak it and modify it. So whichever site ends up being chosen, we'll continue to push this design and change it. I would say there's common things that we're holding to that we've heard from the district. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, also, daylighting is proven in educational settings to really have a strong impact on learning, attention, there's so much positivity that comes out of daylighting. So these type of um, themes isn't could be recorded, but basically there's a lot that goes into the thinking to make sure that the building really reflects 21st century learning that we that we embrace with um, the district, and then also just best practices for architecture. Daylighting does everybody good. So. And we really want to emphasize the the opportunity to bring as much light into the school as possible and, and connect our students with uh, the surrounding uh, nature as well. I mean, that's why we have outdoor learning uh, experiences uh, designed within, within the school. It's important to also note that the uh, learning dens also include the hall space, so we're trying to create some efficiency there with uh, the ability to move students from class to class, but also make them wider, perhaps a little longer, and, and use those spaces as uh, opportunities to, to learn in groups and also mix classes up as well. Uh, in this day and age, uh, 
teachers can teach the same lesson, but it's taught differently. And as, as part of uh, what we did when we were visioning, we, we went to the six kindergarten classes and, and watched the same lesson. And we had six different approaches to that lesson. They were all very good, but when you look at student learning styles, uh, students do have preferred learning styles. In this day and age, it would be possible at, at times for those students to choose the teacher and the learning style that they were, were most comfortable with. Those spaces give us that opportunity to do so. And then sensory spaces as well in this day and age. Uh, uh, cubby holes or structures where kids can go and, and read or work in small groups. And and also some of our students need sensory spaces to to, to regulate, to calm down. And, and schools in this day and age when they're built, they incorporate those spaces into, into the den learning centers and other hallways that, that uh, may uh, go between the, the learning communities. I have, 745, just time check. I have a general question on all these plans. All of these plans have um, the ability to add four new classrooms, mm -hmm. correct? But has anyone actually looked at how the school would be configured with those four new classrooms? Because they don't, they're all on the first to second grade. Like, it, there's nowhere, where would the kindergarten go? They don't have an extra classroom on their wing. So has anyone looked at the plans for that? Yeah, so the answer to that is that each one of these classrooms is designed in a modular way so they all have the same components mm -hmm. uh, one of the special ed rooms has the exact same components as a regular classroom so that really gives the flexibility to move a group of kids into almost any other one of those rooms and shift kids around so it might mean that if you have a, a bubble year you've got some kindergarten upstairs and some downstairs or you have a transition pre-K to kindergarten that gets moved over here into this area, but there's really a lot of long-term flexibility in terms of where each grade level happens. But doesn't that just go against what you're academically saying, where you want all the kids at the same grade together, so they'll all be mixed? Yeah, I think that that's a part of outgrowing a school, you know, then you have to start to make do with what you have. So if you're adding all the classrooms on one side, then you have still outgrown the school. If if it's not balanced, if half the classrooms, if the lower age, if K to pre-K are on one side and one to two are on the other, and you're adding all of them on one side, you haven't, you're still outgrowing the school, even if you add it, because you didn't balance it. Yeah, no, I, I see your point. I think that if it is important to the town and the district to be able to do multiple additions or do two different additions, then that thought process will be incorporated into the design as it, as it evolves, regardless of which option is chosen. Uh, right now we're showing it as one edition because if you're going to add space, one edition makes the most sense, but there's no reason why you couldn't then add a second edition as you continue to expand. So I think that is something that we would take into consideration uh, designing these tools. If we could add to that, um, at, at this scale, I, what we're looking for is room on the site. So I do think the next levels of the schematic piece would be um, often when you do an addition, some there's a piece, that buffer piece, that has to change its nature to allow that. So clearly with the learning dens, that will have to take that consideration. How do they adjust to those additional classrooms? So it is, that's another level of design refinement that we'll have to consider. So, bringing that. And this is, this is designed to show the MSBA that it can be done. Mm -hmm. so it's checking a box and frankly, we haven't had any classrooms to any one of our schools with expansion. So, I mean, over, I don't know, never. <laughs> we have, we so we're checking a box. We have a question online, Karen Morrison. <laughs> Hi, thanks. Um, so my question was about expansion space as well. It seems like this design, the expansion space is quite a bit smaller than in the previous design. Is that just a trick of the eye or is that, does that bear out in the square footage? Well, that's, a, that's a good eye. The reason it's larger here is because it incorporates four door space that would be coming down through here. Mm -hmm. 
which is again repeated on the first floor. It includes space for a stair. And again, this is just diagrammatic. So if it needs to get a little bit smaller on the upper floor or you're adding classrooms plus a learning center room or something like that, there's space to do it. Okay, but function so functionally it's it's the same amount of expansion it's space. Yeah. It is. It's four classrooms. Yeah. yeah. One might be a little bit larger than four classrooms, but at a minimum it's four classrooms. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good eye. All right, we have a few more slides to get through. All right. So this is the evaluation criteria that was used the first time around when we were narrowing the six initial options down to three. What's going to happen is the school building committee is going to take another look at these and see if this is still the criteria that they want to be using when choosing among these three options. And then the other big change on here is cost. When this was first done, there was no cost information. Now we're going to be getting pretty detailed cost estimates that we can share with you next week and cost is going to factor into this decision. So as we did before, we'll assign numerical numerical values and the members will independently vote to see how these three options compare against each other and that will help us narrow it down to a single choice. Any comments on this? Sustainability. Uh, this is just a quick introduction as we've been uh, letting folks know what's coming in future steps of this process. Uh, there will be sustainability that moves in uh, a, another lens for this project to look at, and that happens in schematic design. Uh, what we'd like everyone to know now is uh, that first workshop will be happening sometime in January. So we want folks to, uh, the folks that are interested, and that'll certainly be the Sustainability Committee of Littleton. Uh, there will be people on, on uh, probably the Building Committee and Finance Committee, but anyone else that's interested in being part of this aspect of the project um, should be, should consider themselves invited to this and uh, participate uh, certainly at the first meeting which will be uh, advertised at a more specific date soon, but also the following meetings. So you'll learn more about what happens uh, for sustainability in this project. The MSBA offers some funding opportunities if this project pursues certain things. Uh, the MSBA requires this project to meet certain lead goals uh, that relate to sustainability. So we'll be talking more about that in schematic design at that first visioning meeting, and we'll let folks know when that's going to be happening. All right, I want to talk a little bit about community outreach. Uh, we'll be talking on the next slide about what will be presented at the special town meeting on the 29th. Uh, but for now, the update is that the SBC established a community outreach subcommittee made up of three members of the SBC. And then we have a really great number of community volunteers who wanted to be involved with this. And the list of opportunities is what they have brainstormed so far. Some of them are being put into action. Others are being explored. And we are open to additional ideas about how we can get the word out about this project. Right now, there is a frequently asked questions section of the website that is going through its final editing, and that should be live on the website, hopefully by next week's meeting. And on the website right now, there is a big link on the homepage that says, make your voice heard. And this is a way for anybody to let the design team know their thoughts or ask questions. And while the intention is not to reply to everybody individually, and so we can really use that input to help guide the decisions that are made on the process, see if there's any concerns that people have that are not already being talked about, and sort of 
it's our finger on the pulse of the community. So we would really encourage everybody to go to that website and click on that link and send us a message. Any comments or questions? All right. So lastly, at the special town meeting, we have 10 minutes on the 29th to talk about the project. This is just a bullet point of potential topics to cover. And I think that we should, as a group, discuss what's going to be covered at that time. Studio G is not legally allowed to campaign for the project. So the information that we can provide is informational only, uh, but we can help support with graphics and discussions among the school building committee. OPM can't be. Same with OPM, yeah. same rule of the time. It's a conflict of interest, actually. Yeah, so I'm glad you said that. And, and from a, a superintendent's uh, vantage point, it, it's imperative that promotion doesn't occur, especially for me. We're, we're here to provide information as to why Shaker Lane no longer meets the educational needs of our students and uh, we'll provide good information and the public will then uh, weigh in on it and make it decisions accordingly. Uh, looking at this this 10 minute time slot here, I'm really interested in you know, hearing from the people in the audience too. I mean, we wanna, we wanna make sure that that 10 minutes that we use is, is going to uh, be very productive and give information, pertinent information that the community needs to hear. There are some community members, uh, despite our efforts, that really don't know a lot about the project, if anything. And uh, I spoke to Rotary today, and, and some of the Rotary members have not heard uh, anything about the project. And I'm a member of Rotary, so it, it's uh, imperative that we figure out ways to, to reach the entire community. But 10 minutes isn't a lot, a lot of time, and we want to make sure that we, we hit those points that uh, people want to, to hear about. Uh, I wouldn't mind as a superintendent and, and with Michelle and, and uh, our chair, Justin McCarthy, spending a bit of time teeing it up. And, and uh, Michelle and I can certainly answer the question, why? Why do we need a, a reimagined Shaker Lane School? But there also needs to be some time for um, Studio G to, to talk about things that are important, like potential layouts of the plan. And, and, and I guess there, what... What do you feel as, as you know, participants today in the meeting would be important to learn about during that 10 minutes? Jane. Um, remembering back on different projects in town and what has really worked and what hasn't. And also a quick aside, I love reimagining in new schools and in and, and the great space. You have me. So what I think speaks to a lot of people in town is understanding that the resource where we are replacing is it is no longer going to meet our needs. And if you can bring forward in this discussion the points of why this facility just need it, it we need to do something and offer um walkthroughs if, if before you do this we set up the next steps more than one walkthrough where we can show the public the, the residents of our town what is happening with this facility and point to where it is not no longer going to serve our needs lean into that first um i i love what I love all this, all of the pretty graphs, but I, I do think that the town will respond best if we start with what's happening with this facility and why do we, why must we address the situation? Does that make sense? Thank you, it does. Yeah. Um, so I think we all know the cost is going to be third rail. Um, and I think a lot of people are going to only focus on that. And one possible solution would be to present the comparable um, projects that you had in the initial presentation and say, we don't have final numbers, we don't want to speculate, but here's what it has caused other towns to build uh, very similar schools. Because, you know, there's going to be, I know there's going to be a fight 
over this um, override or exclusion. Um, but I think level setting now and anchoring the price in advance of that would be a, could be a way of, of uh, helping it along. Thank you. Go ahead. Well, that, what Janine just said and what Matthew just said dovetail nicely together. If you think about it, right? I mean, we really need to explain to the community why we're getting the school because mm -hmm. I don't understand. I'm here for the first time tonight. Mm -hmm. Hearing it was very impressive, right? I understand the educational component need. I mean, what I heard was great, right? But <clears throat> the community has no idea. Right, you have how many children go to the school today? Four hundred, four hundred and fifty. Right, which maybe is three hundred families, maybe two hundred families, whatever. They, we don't know, right? So I would focus my impression is to focus the bulk of your time as the where where we are today and why we're here talking about this. What what brought us? To Matthew's point, however. This town is very conscious when it comes to money. And we we have we are spending a lot of money on a lot of things in our town today. So they're gonna there will be a huge focus on that. So moving beyond what Matthew said, a key component to all of this, I think, is that MSBA, right? There's funding that's coming from the state. As I understand it, or at least I heard rumors. There is, right? right? <laughs> but it's just a rumor, right? So, so the Oxcat and what helped the library get built was the some additional benefit of having fifty some percent of the budget was covered by the state, right? So it's not just talking about an MFDA process. It's talking about what is okay. So you got this massive number that it's going to cost to build this beautiful school for educating our young children into the future. <clears throat> but a percentage of that, and I don't know if it's just a percentage, is being covered by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So you can't just throw a big number and freak everybody out. You've got to show how it's really, it's of our benefit to build it and get state funds. Right? So there's a huge benefit. All of that needs, and that may be all you need to talk about. <laughs> See the Those three things. Yes. Sure. I'm sorry. Rob, you've been 55 Jennifer Street. Nobody else had done that, so I wasn't sure we were doing it. <laughs> Go ahead. I think it might be interesting to explain to folks, um, not tying in the, the MSBA, that the MSBA covers. You know the X percent up to the square footage amount that they that they allow, and if you, I think if I were coming into town meeting, you know I might say, well, wait a minute. So the state is saying this much space, and they'll cover you know whatever percent. But y'all are saying we want this much, and this much we're paying all by ourselves. A naive question might be, well, why not just build it the size that the state suggests? Just, yeah. just saying, you're yeah. going to get that. Well, I tell me, you won't get that question because we've decided we're not going to allow pressure, right. which um, I don't know that that's a great, but that's the bottom of the bridge. We've decided that. But but that question will come up. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. And it'll need to be addressed at one of the, because we're going to give dates and when there will be questions. So that'll be soon behind. So we'll need to be able to talk about that at those times for sure. Right. Okay. I mean, I would love to hear sir, as well. I, yeah, I, the reason why yeah. it's we point. haven't talked about it very much is because we're not going to over to Dr. Clements. We want to talk, right? Like, thank you. We want to, but it's the MSGA has all these complex formulas and it's not a straight percentage and it has to do with all sorts of different things. But I, I, I'm thinking back to what's on the FAQ on the website, and I think the section on MFDA funding needs fattening up. And I agree that this is the question that is definitely going to come up. Right. And I think it's for, I mean, we're all schooled to one degree or another mm -hmm. in town and finance and, and, and all this. But I, again, I think you could get a naive question that says, well, look, it's X dollars per square foot. 
cut, now I'm not advocating this, I'm just saying, that, you know, cut 30% of the square footage, which will reduce the cost by more than 30% because you're cutting the part that the state won't even reimburse. And then we'll have what the state suggested. I'm just saying we need to have a really clear answer that isn't based on financial formulas. You know this, you know this. I get that. <laughs> so um, I was just going to check out on your question. I think what you're asking is the extra, the extra size of the building that, is, that also translates into the extra cost. This extra that, that's beyond what this what MSBA is going to pay for. Why is that necessary? Right, and I wouldn't so use the word extra, but I wouldn't use that yeah, word. Yeah, understood, understood. Yeah. understood. <laughs> but, but we're kind of getting at that, that question. So I think we talked about that in there, but maybe we need to make it more clear because there are different pieces mm -hmm. you know, that are noted as extra. I don't... And it may be a good I don't know. Reimbursed is the word. Well, what came up is reimbursed versus not. Reimbursable. 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 Yeah, yeah. I think we've yeah. had a lot of reasons yeah. why. And I think they're all good yeah. reasons. But it might be better to focus on, look, we need this to be expandable. We need it to, to grow with the town. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to make sure that we're serving the students in the way that they are learning. And 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 instead of having a huge bullet list of all the things we're doing with mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. extra space, mm -hmm. say here's what. So, so we, have, we have ten minutes to, to sorry, present. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, on, the, on the special committee, yeah. ten minutes. What I heard in the warrant, they only want one speaker. So we have to determine who that's going to be to address we'll, it. Uh, and what well, I heard, I thought I heard this we again. One we are, anyways. We'll massage. No, what I'm hearing that. people say now is <laughs> we want one speaker. We know people answer. <laughs> Why do we need it? What's the MSBA reimbursable? How much is it going to cost? Um, it's, it's, Ten minutes. We, we don't have a lot of time right, to get right. out there. Those seem like the high points. But I, I guess I guess the way I think people will frame it as, um, and I'm just framing it this way, yeah. Um, yeah. is, well, aren't those in the, isn't the extra 30% Nice to have, but we don't have to have. So I'm just could, could we could we tag on to the nuances if there was actually two the, the previous thing of other communities are spending this much. I think what we could also say is um, you know yeah. in, in MSBA there isn't any community where MSBA is doing 100. percent right. No, I mean, there isn't. It's, yeah, it's, it's, we can talk that about that. a lot of this information yeah. for the extra 30 percent is not to be determined. So until we, after Smack is not really yeah. here from now. But we perhaps we can deliver the that that information yeah. of neighboring yeah. towns yeah. and also neighboring towns. You know. And the reimbursements, right? Yeah, yeah, that would be very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So the, they, it's not like this is the first time. Yeah. And the things that they don't support, the special other pre-K, whatever. If, the, if we say that's the extra thirty percent, they make it back in support twenty percent of that. Once we make the, the argument to them that based on the education plan and the needs of the education, these things are are required, and they can say yes. In my experience working with them, special education is kind of a a yes all the time. Pre-K is the one that so maybe if there's four classrooms, they'll support two. You know, so now you're looking at if you think it's thirty percent more, now you're down at ten percent. You know, so but a lot of that stuff. Realize we're yeah. still dealing with estimates and potentials right now. So we do not even for town meeting. We're we're working on cost estimates, but cost estimates are still coming off of plans that aren't fully developed. We're going to have one preferred option come out of these three. That's going to be fully designed to schematic design level which will have a really, really good understanding of the cost. We have to have that project funding agreement with the MSBA, which will tell us at that point what they're going to support before we move on. I didn't but realize that, that it would be the first one was a negotiation. But, oh, it, it, it is. We, so so I, that's a point yeah. that I hadn't heard before. Yeah. I think that's actually pretty valuable to say. It, so, we have an it's a one-sided negotiation. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you know, I'll get to you, I promise. All right, I'm the outsider here, good, good, good. right? Yeah. You guys have way too much information and knowledge, and you're in the weeds. I'm sorry, but you're going to have a 10-minute presentation know, here. Trying to what you guys are talking points. about is yeah. way too much in the weeds, is my perception of this, which is why <clears throat> people at town meeting aren't going to know what you just said. They're not going to know that. And you're not going to tell them that at this town meeting, whether you should or not is a different question. 
But in your 10 minutes, you're not going to tell them how MSBA reimburses and that it's 30. That's a 30. We don't even know about this stuff. You, well, you just said, in my mind, it's like, what? It's not so so yeah. I don't need to know that in this 10 minutes presentation. When we talk about MSBA reimbursement process, I think it's a range, right? Yeah. And the cost is yeah. going to be X, MSBA reimburses a percentage. We don't know yet because we haven't engaged, we haven't even been approved. Right? Correct. So, but the range is somewhere between, look at your corresponding neighboring towns. The range is somewhere between 50 to 70%, whatever the range is. I don't know what it is. But it depends on what the building is, right? Yes. yes. And we don't need we don't know that right now. We don't need to know that for in our ten minute presentation. In my humble opinion. So so the right. So the big point then is that MSB will be reimbursing us the town for this project to be determined. No, no, no. Well, it's not like any range is going to be seventy percent. Examples. Forty eight. Examples. 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 People didn't understand. Give it to MSB reimbursed at all. You should know that. Say this. MSB will give us a number. Right. MSB will reimburse like thirty to fifty percent. Sure. Or something like that. And my second piece on this is there will be questions. To Brian's point, you're not going to take questions. Fine. Your first public forum after town meeting needs to be relatively soon thereafter mm -hmm. because you're going to get people walking out of that meeting yeah. with their heads spinning. Yeah. <laughs> right? And we're going to tell them what that date is. And it needs to be within months. Yeah. Do we, we, oh, it's, yeah, it's within months. I don't know. Do we have it on the calendar yet? We no, will. we will. And, well, and we you will. need to be prepared to have some of these conversations at yeah. those meetings. Yeah. yeah, totally, totally agree. And, and, uh, we should be able to come up with a range at this point in yeah. time. Yeah. And so I think that's, it's imperative that we. And by the way, it gives you the it gives you the flexibility to do what we just talked about. The negotiation is, guy, go forth and conquer, negotiate the crap out of this, and get a better deal. Right? That's what it, that's that's where you're going to prove your work. Right. So I wanted to to emphasize that we do have an opportunity to negotiate with MSBA for the space that we feel is necessary. And we're looking forward to that opportunity because we can we can justify every square foot. So, and and then the end they're gonna they're gonna make a determination on, in terms of what they they're gonna feel as reimbursable square footage moving forward. And that information will be really helpful to have at that point in time. But to the point I heard, I, I don't know that there's a project out there that has actually stuck within reimbursable space. They've always gone beyond that because. You know, that's like anybody else. Uh, that's a really important thing to say yeah. because people are going to complain about all this extra spending on unnecessary things. So this has been very helpful, and, and we're going to you know, certainly tailor that to your input. Do you have questions? Oh, just a moment. Yeah, sure. I'll have Karen Morrison first. Hi, Karen. Karen Morrison, please. Karen, you there? Hi, Karen Morrison, 11 Spruce Street. Um, yeah, I, I'm not going to extend things. I was just going to say the same thing that several other people have said. I think the focus of the 10 minutes should probably be more on why we need to do this, why we need to do something, and then to invite the community to come and engage with us on what exactly that, that thing will be. But I think, you know, I think it's the, it's the, we're holding, um, what was it? You know, there's offices and closets mm -hmm. and kids are getting their, you know, reading um, assistance, you know, in the hallway in front of all the other kids and all the other teachers. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's that kind of thing that I think is going to be really um, key over the details of cost. I think a range of, you know, what MSBA and I think um, something uh, that Dr. Clenchy mentioned at another meeting was how difficult it is to get accepted into this MSBA program. Um, oh, yeah. And so I would I would talk about that too. Say you know, this opportunities like this don't come up a whole lot. We're really fortunate to have this opportunity, and so this is, and we need to take advantage of it. Thank you. Thank you. I think we're there. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I just want to uh, add to all that is said. You know, there's the first time uh, in front of everybody, and there's a lot of information and a lot of questions. Some may be very basic and new questions. But if they are not answered and they go back, you know, sort of impression, first impression itself is like, hey, I don't have answers for a lot of questions. So just wondering, I think you already have one of the um, slides that maybe a handout, inertia to the graphics and other things, maybe some FAQs, you know, yeah. some of the questions that all came up with, mm -hmm. you may not be able to answer them or there's no time for that. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, put a bunch of those questions together and, and maybe a handout. That way, at least they will have some information mm -hmm. rather than not having anything for any of those questions. Yeah. That's a great idea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, this is Kate Jacobson, 14 Wamaset Trail. I agree with leaning into why this is critical for our town is important. I anticipate people will be very interested in feeling secure in that we've considered all the new apartments that are going into town and considered the amount of growth our town might within the next 10 years be expecting. So I think those are types of questions the community might be interested in. I think beside why this is so important for the town, a uh, high level overview of the next steps so that people feel that they are educated on if I have a strong opinion about this, how do I express this? Either way, like I really want to get behind this or I really want to stand up and say why I don't believe in this. I think just explaining after why, what the next steps are in the process so people really actually understand where we're going and why we're doing these things. And I wholeheartedly agree with the person who said having it clearly stated when the next meeting is for people to join in and clearly stating that it would be a hybrid meeting, I think would be critical because we're talking primarily right now to the most interested families are probably people with little kids about to enter into Shaker Lane. They'll, they'll be the first ones to say, I can't go to that meeting because I'm getting my kid in bed. Um, but at least if it's clear that it's a hybrid option, mm -hmm. they might find a way to be able to attend virtually and get the information they need. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else, Dorothy? Yeah. So if I can you address the other only one person sure. comment. I, I'm certain that Tim will allow some Thank some you. leverage here, and I think that yourself, yes. Michelle, and Justin, and any of you in support of one another, I think is probably the right trade to have on that. I think so too. Yeah. And we'll have Studio G do a couple of those higher level things to, you know, within what we can do. The, the most salient point is whether or not 10 minute interval. Mm -hmm. And then having that next meeting planned is, is paramount that we can devote some time to, to answering questions. Any other questions? Yes, Rob. Maybe your next meeting is a hybrid. <laughs> right. I don't know if we could pull off a hybrid. We could we could pull off a different kind of hybrid, maybe. But LCTV doesn't have the equipment. Yeah. But we could I, was, do I was only thinking it would be good to get people into that space. Well, we have talked about having some of our regular meter meetings at Shaker Lane School and also offering tours to the community. If well. we have a meeting there for people like me who come in, I've never actually stepped foot in Shakespeare. So, yeah, so Rob, two things. So our next meeting uh, next Wednesday is in this in this room, so it'll be hybrid again, and we'll refine things further. But then what we also talked about was for the presentation that's given at the town meeting, we all agree 10 minutes isn't going to be a lot of time. Thus, we really need to be able to say, okay, our next few meetings are... X and Y, and that's what we talked about having that at Shaker Lane, so we could then kind of combine it, maybe having a tour also sure. at that same time before the meeting, so people have some context 
when they come and, and come to the bigger the bigger yeah. meeting thereafter. Yeah. And we can work with LCTV. It won't be the same quality of production, but we can figure something out with technologies. Yeah. So any other questions? Well, before I adjourn the meeting, I'd like to thank all of you for coming out tonight. And thank you so much for the advice. It's been very helpful. And we're certainly uh, you would help guide us for that uh, very important 10 minutes that we have at town meeting. So thank you. Do I have a motion for adjournment? Don't move. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank have you. a great night. Thanks, Kevin.